A very happy Women's Day to all the lovely women watching our SciTalk series. Well, friends, when it comes to women in science and voicing their voices, we think of none other than the life of science.com. And today we have caught in our camera one such life who is constantly lab hopping and fantastically adventuring in science. Let's welcome none other than Ashima Dogra. Hi Ashima. Hi. Welcome to Sci Talk. I think this is not a Sci Talk, but She Talk or a Sci Com Talk. Mm -hmm. So, and a very happy Women's Day to you. So, uh, how can we as women support other women? I think it's very important. This is also uh, um, it's it's a feminism itself to support uh, women, uh, and I would say not just uh, other women, but also other. Uh, uh, people who are uh, not in public life, who are, whose narratives are erased. This includes other genders. This includes uh, uh, not able-bodied people, so disabled people. In, Indi in the Indian context, it's very important uh, to support uh, lower castes who are not, especially in our circle of knowledge making. Um, so it's uh, so we need to do that. Uh, so, what is this uh, lifeofscience.com? the platform which you have started so is it kind of a platform or is it a project or what would you say yeah so uh, so the life of science.com is a website but um, it's also a project so um, on the website we uh, publish uh, science media uh, so me Nandita and the rest mm -hmm. of the team uh, and we've profiled now about uh, close to 200 Indian women scientists from mm -hmm. around the country uh, so you will find those profiles there, which are like text-based uh, and uh, some photo essays. Um, I personally really enjoyed uh, taking the pictures. And we also work with a large uh, community of freelance uh, freelancers. And these could be uh, illustrators, uh, comic makers, uh, podcast makers, podcast producers, uh, photographers, and things like this. Uh, of course, uh, science writers. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, how do you manage to fund a uh, life of science? <laughs> <laughs> um, because the funding has been the challenge. So, um, we want to do this work, but where to find the funding for it? So, we've looked at uh, crowdfunding, which has been very successful. So, uh, you have covered scientific discussions uh, as an international journalist, and now you're covering science in India. So, do you mm. feel any differences? Do you find any differences between the two? So, the only thing I would say here is um, uh, there used to be uh, a lot more press conferences. And in India, maybe that's also changed because it's also across time. Maybe there's no uh, press conferences even abroad in the West where I was working. I have heard that the life of science has the policy of hiring only women. So is that true or what would you like to say about it? No, it is not true. It is not true. Um, I don't know where you heard this. Maybe somebody is thinking this because a lot of the uh, people um, that have worked with us have been women. Okay. Uh, but we have had one uh, uh, coordinator who identifies as a man uh, so I don't think we have uh, this policy and also we don't do hires uh, specifically um, and because it's uh, a, a group where we try to uh, make uh, uh, funds available for everybody by these methods that I told you. Uh, what do you do when you're not lab hopping? Um, what do I do? <laughs> uh, I try to, um, I like my work a lot, so I'm often on the screen, uh, so when I realize, okay, that I need to stop, then I uh, switch off all the screens and go out for a walk, <laughs> and I'm also very interested uh, these days in natural building, uh, so I'm learning how to uh, build with natural materials like uh, bamboo and mud, so building structures. Uh, and uh, I'm also uh, trying to develop uh, green fingers. I don't have them yet. So uh, women in science or women in STEM, so these yeah. terms have gained popularity over the last few years. So yes. 
and uh, what do you think about it? Where does India stand today when it comes to women in science or women in STEM? Uh, I think uh, in, especially in the last two years, uh, a lot has happened, uh, especially from the uh, uh, perspective of the government, what the government uh, is saying. Um, so uh, like recently there was uh, the announcement for the 11 uh, women in science chairs that have been named after uh, historical uh, Indian yeah. women, women in science. Yeah. So these kind of initiatives did not exist before. You know, we've we've had a Janaki Amal uh, Prize for taxonomy uh, for a long time. Uh, you know, and there are a few uh, uh, Kalpana Chawla and these kind of public figures that have mm -hmm. been celebrated. And um, um, it's interesting because in also in popular culture you see. Uh, Indian popular culture, mm -hmm. you see more uh, women in science narratives, for example, the success of uh, the ISRO women. Yeah. Um, so it's suddenly, you're right, that it, there is this, uh, uh, um, more people are talking about this and we're all accepting, getting to a point where we're saying, okay, wait, where are the women in science and where they, have they been, have they never been here or have they been ignored? And of course, this is not just the India thing. It's uh, connected to a global scene as all um, uh, things post-globalization are. I think like since I've been talking to Indian women in science for the last four years, I have to say uh, that uh, it has definitely, is now more uh, a common topic. It, it's not so uncomfortable uh, and uh, four years when we started, which was just uh, not so long ago, there was this like, okay, why are you covering uh, women mm -hmm. in science? And we were, when we went for talks and stuff, people asked us, so how long are you going to do this? You know, like, is there a limit to this? And there were questions like this, but now it, there's a more, um, uh, there's, it's, it's accepted that uh, this is something important. So just talking about women in science in India, yeah. So you have published a book, 31 Fantastic Adventures in Science. Yes. So what would you like to say about 31 Fantastic Adventures? Yes, um, I really am proud of it because it has a uh, woman that me and Nandita, who is the co-author of the book, uh, the, uh, that we have met personally mm -hmm. uh, when we went around. And um, they're really nice stories. So every story starts with... Um, uh, you know, about how uh, these women scientists started out uh, being inspired by something mm -hmm. which led them to uh, science, you know, some inspiration or an individual or an experience in a forest, things like this. So there are stories written for children, uh, in a, uh, but I think anybody uh, yeah. upwards of 10 years old uh, can enjoy these books. And uh, yeah, there's uh, also uh, uh, very nice illustrations by Upasana Agarwal. Yeah, like you yeah. said, it is not for just children, but also for girls because it is yeah. a part of popularizing women in science in India, especially. Yes, yes, it yeah. is. So it's a very nice book. Even I read it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's your favorite chapter? Uh, Vidita Vaidya. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> is it because you have a, a neuro background? Or? No, no. I, in general, I liked her and I got to know more about her, like how she started with that, uh, I think, bee, uh, this thing, insect. She was watching it. So yes. just read in that. Yeah, she's yeah. really awesome. Yeah. So uh, where do you hope to go next? Like, what are your plans? Any upcoming projects? Or... Yeah, so uh, the uh, there's a second book uh, that me and Nandita are writing, which is not for children. It's not illustrated. So it's a, a book written for a general audience. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a reportage about uh, the last four years of lab hopping, what we have seen. Uh, it is a... Uh, investigation into the gender gap, why it exists and what are people saying about it and uh, this one will be published by also Penguin and it's uh, mostly going to be called Lab Hopping. So yeah. that's We look forward to it. Then. So, thank you Asima for your wonderful time. Thank you very much.